Fun fact. Several actors crossed over between the Beverly Hillbillies and I Dream of Jeannie. Harriet McGibbon, who played Mrs. Margaret Drysdale, the snobbish wife of banker Milburn Drysdale, also played the role of Mrs. Bellows, the wife of Dr. Alfred Bellows, in one episode of I Dream of Jeannie. Dr. Bellows, played by Hayden Rourke, appears in this episode as Mr. Wilkins, the overly protective guardian of Jethro's friend, Armstrong Doosler III. In I Dream of Jeannie, he played the nosy and skeptical NASA psychiatrist. Come and listen to my story about a man named Jed, a poor mountaineer, barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food, and up to the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is, black gold, Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbilly. towels Mr. Drysdale give us? Yeah, he says they're beach towels, but we use them right here. Granny, we've got company coming, and I reckon you'd like to get some vittles going. Who's coming? Well, one of them uh, rich, uh, high society Beverly Hills fellows name of uh, Armstrong Doozer McHugh the third. The third what? Third Armstrong Doozer McHugh, I reckon. You mean to tell me that them McHughes named all three of their young'uns the same name? I think that's it. It's none of my business. But dogged if I can see where Armstrong Deucer is such a good name. <laughs> yeah, kind of confusing, too. I reckon that's why they call him first, second, and third. How well, this fella get acquainted with us? Well, uh, he ain't yet. Jethro invited him over here to meet us, but between you and me, I think it's Ellie Mae he wants to meet. Yeah. <laughs> Jethro's always bragging about his pretty cousin. I told her there's a fella coming over to meet her, and she promised to put on her prettiest dress. Well, when that Armstrong Deucer gets a look at Ellie, He's gonna forget what number he is. <laughs> huh? Over here, Ellie. <laughs> Ellie May Clampett, there is a fella coming to see you. Well, what's wrong, Pa? I put on my prettiest dress. <laughs> Ellie May, look at your feet. <laughs> Ain't got no shoes on. Well, I'll go put them on. Come back, Ellie May. I just can't think of no quicker way to kill a romance than to meet a feller toting a skunk in your Clampett residence? Yes, sir. Thank you. He's older than I figured. And where are you for? Jeff we didn't see was in the army. It's all right, Jed. It's Confederate graves. <laughs> well, howdy there. I'm Jed Clampett. Uh, this here is Granny, and I reckon you must be Armstrong Doozer McHugh the third. Oh, yes, sir. The second? Uh, no, ma'am. That explains him being older. He's the first. <laughs> Jed, throw Armstrong's here. Yes, sir, uh, you don't understand. Excuse me. Mr. Clampett, I am Armstrong.
Armstrong, Doozer, McHugh the third. Well, howdy there, Armstrong. I fear you're Mike Young for Ellie. Sir, I'm here to play with Jethro. We're classmates in the fifth grade. Uh, Granny, shake hands with Armstrong, Doozer, McHugh the third. Howdy, third. I am delighted to make your acquaintance. Mighty big spread of years between the first and the third. It appears to me the second would be just about right for Ellie. Miss <laughs> Jethro! Oh, please, sir, please. Master Armstrong is very delicate. Jethro won't hurt me. He's my friend. But you might get a nosebleed at that altitude. <laughs> Master Armstrong is under the care of several specialists. He's very sickly. Wilkins, please. Last week we had nurses around the clock. Even got a sick clock. <laughs> Uh, Master Armstrong, please, uh, you're not to get excited. Would you like a tranquilizer? No. Come on, everybody, let's go in the house. I got some vittles cooking. One moment, please. I must go in the house before Master Armstrong. I'm sorry about Wilkins, but he has his orders. <laughs> This is an allergy spray. He ain't got no allergies. <laughs> Master Armstrong has several. And spray him. Now, you don't understand. This spray settles the dust in the room. Dust in my house? Why, if you weren't wearing the uniform that I dearly love, I'd ram this down your throat and reach in and push the button. Now, Granny, calm down. Well, I just mopped and cleaned in here just this morning. Madam, the air is filled with minute particles invisible to the naked eye. I don't see him. <laughs> Hope you brought your swimsuit, little doozy. We got a dandy big cement pond here. Oh, I'm afraid I don't know how to swim. Oh, Jethro will learn you. Sure. Oh, no, no. Master Armstrong's not allowed in the water. No wonder he's got all them allergies. A good hot bath with lye soap. That's what he needs. Lye soap? <laughs> Master Armstrong, I don't think I should leave you here. Please, Wilkins. Well? I'll take your temperature and blood pressure before I go. No, Wilkins, I feel fine. Oh, very well. With whom shall I leave the young master's schedule on rest, diet, medication, and telephone numbers of doctors? Well, if there's anything you do with doctor and granny here is the best. Very well. There you are. Now then. Antihistamine pills, tranquilizers, acid pills, anti-acid pills, vitamins, iron, Liver, yeast, extract, antibiotics. Open up, Master Armstrong. It's time for your throat spray. Just a precautionary measure to see that he fights off the respiratory virus. If that rascal comes around here, I'll fight him. Over to school, all the big fellas is always picking on little doozy. But not when Jet was around. Oh, I almost forgot. The oxygen tent is in the car. Where shall I set it up? Tent? Uh, yes, sir. Master Armstrong usually spends an hour a day in it. Oh, you like camping, do you? <laughs> well, say he does. He's happy as a itchy pig rubbing against a real fence. Speaking of pigs, I got some hog jowl stewing and a possum pie in the oven for this little feller's lunch. Come on. Hog jowl? Possum pie? <laughs> do you intend to feed those things to Master Armstrong? Why, don't he eat that good at home? Oh, he has an extremely delicate digestive system. At present, he's on a diet of special Swiss yogurt. We hunted all over Beverly Hills to find it. Get through, get out your rifle and hunt down one of them Swiss yogurts. Okay, Uncle Jed. Oh, and I'll take a little doozy along to make sure I shoot the right kind. Sure, reckon Granny will know how to cook it once she sees it. Is it run or fly? But neither. Yogurt is inanimate. It just, uh, lies there. <laughs> Ain't gonna be much sport to shoot, Jethro. <laughs> That's a fact. Hey, has anybody seen little Charlie? A dog! Go away. Master Armstrong's allergic to all animals. <laughs> Ellie! Charlie got in the kitchen. Oh, a skunk! <laughs> oh, city feller, I wouldn't do that if I was you. He might just return the favor. <laughs> Question 1. What is the name of the boy that comes over to visit Jethro? 1. Armstrong Doozler, the third. 2. 
George Armstrong Custer. Three, Mickey Mouse. Question one. What is the name of the boy that comes over to visit Jethro? One, Armstrong Doozler, the third. Two, George Armstrong Custer. Three, Mickey Mouse. The answer his name is Armstrong Doozler, the third, a fifth grade classmate of Jethro's. Chuck it in there, young fella. Looks like you could use a little fattening up. That's a fact. I throwed away chicken bones with more meat on them than he's got. Hey, you want some more, little doozy? Oh, no, thank you. It was most delicious. I'd like to tell Chef how to make that. Who, oh, Chef? Oh, he's the fella that does the cooking over at Doozy's house. A man in the kitchen? <laughs> yeah, Granny. You ought to see him. Cooks in a great big white hat. Well, the first thing to tell him to do is to get rid of the hat and do his cooking in a pot. <laughs> well, how come your ma don't do the cooking, little doozy? Who? Your ma. Oh, mother. I don't believe she knows where the kitchen is. On her rare visits home, I've never seen her there. She visits home? My mother and father spend most of their time traveling. Oh, drummers, huh? <laughs> what do they sell? Oh, well, they don't work. They just travel. How come? I really don't know. I imagine they enjoy it. Well, don't you miss your ma and pa? Oh, they write to me regularly, every month or two. I have a marvelous collection of foreign stamps. And they always telephone me on my birthday. That's right, friendly of them. <laughs> well, who looks after you, little doozy? Oh, mostly the governess. Governess? She's married to Wilkins. Did you hear that, Granny? That fella to bring him over here is the governor. I still don't give him no right to tell me I got dust in my house. <laughs> you folks have so much fun. I never even laugh at home. Well, little fella, anytime you feel like busting out laughing, you come right on over. <laughs> Excuse me. Come on, little doozy. You promised to help me with my homework. He's the smartest kid in school. Oh, I'd rather be able to swim and climb trees like you. Well, you help me with history, and I'll teach you to swim and tree climb. And I'll learn your wrestling so the big kids won't be picking on you. <laughs> oh, I'd like that. And perhaps I could assist you in some subjects. How about English? Thank you, little doozy. But I done been learned to talk fast. <laughs> Kinda got a hankin' for history, though. What you studying in that? At present, we're on the Civil War. You mean the war betwixt the Yankees and the Americans? <laughs> well, you boys can run along now. You're excused. Just a minute, Sonny. Who'd they learn you won that war? Granny, these boys got studying to do. I want an answer to my question. He's paying school taxes. And I want to know that they're learning our young'uns the truth. Now, who did they say won? The North or the South? Oh, I wish I was in Dixie down south the South. Hush up, Jed. I can't hear the boys answer. Why, madam, every true student of history knows that that glorious armies of that brilliant and beloved leader General Robert E. Lee were never really defeated. Hallelujah, stay for supper. <laughs> Come on, Joe. Hey, little doozy. Didn't our history teach you over to school to save... Oh, I wish I was in Dixie, don't <laughs> Smart little fella. But I gotta learn him the right words to Dixie. <laughs> to young Master Armstrong, and he told me to tell you that he ain't ready to go home yet. He's having too much fun. He's not permitted to have fun. It's bad for his blood pressure. Well, I'll tell him when he comes down out of the top of that tree. He's in the tree? Say, that little rascal can climb like a squirrel. As soon as his hands get toughened up, he'll be as good as Ellie Mae. I insist upon taking him home immediately. I told you, he don't want to go home yet. That makes no difference. He's going. Hold on a minute. I don't want to tangle with no soldier in the Confederate grave. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> this is not a Confederate uniform. <laughs> now remove your hand and lead me to Master Armstrong. And if and I don't? I'll have to take him by force. Is that a fact? <laughs> like Grant took Richmond. What did you say? I shall take him like Grant took Richmond. That's what I thought you said. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I'll be back. Well, you better bring Grant with you and his whole army. <laughs> but, Operator, I must talk to Mr. or Mrs. McHugh. Have you tried Rome? Paris? How about Zurich? Well, try Zermatt. Maybe they're climbing the Matterhorn. <laughs> well, well, try anyway. Maybe their hotel has a long extension cord. <laughs> this is urgent. I thought I told you to ski that. Call me back. My area code is 417 zone 328, and this is mobile 089 30352. <laughs> Never mind. I'll call you. <laughs> Gun to the governor, did you? He ain't no governor. He ain't even a confederate. And what's more, he ain't got all his turnips. You mean he's ditched? He was a sitting in his automobile pretending to be talking on a telephone. <laughs> I wonder how come so many of them kinds seem to wind up out here in California. Chief, but Wilkins here has an urgent problem concerning young Armstrong Deucer McHugh III. Now, well, what is it? Well, to fill you in, Chief, Armstrong Deucer McHugh III's father, Armstrong Deucer McHugh II, has appointed the bank executor of his will, administrator of his estate, and guardian of Armstrong Deucer McHugh III in case something should happen to Mr. and Mrs. Armstrong Deucer McHugh II. <laughs> and that is why Wilkins here, and very wisely, has come to you in this crisis. What is the crisis? I forgot. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, young Master Armstrong is being held a prisoner. Call the FBI. <laughs> Do you know who has him? A hillbilly family called the Clampets. J. Edgar Hoover, please. Never mind, hang on. Wilkins, the Clampets are my next door neighbors, my largest depositors, and my personal friends. And the very salts of the earth. <laughs> Sorry, Chief. But, Mr. Drysdale, young Master Armstrong is extremely frail and delicate. And the Clampets refuse to give him the proper food or rest or medication. They're exposing him to great danger. Get the Clampets on the phone. They won't harm a boy. But I'm afraid they already have. They've got him climbing trees and, and eating possum pie. <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> but they're violent people. Granny threatened me with a shotgun. What did you say about the South? <laughs> the South what? <laughs> oh, Granny! Jane Hathaway here. Could you call young Armstrong Deucer McHugh III to the telephone? I don't hardly think so. He went out of the cement pond to swim. Thank you, Granny. Goodbye. <laughs> Nothing to worry about. Master Armstrong is in swimming. But he doesn't know how to swim. <laughs> but, Jethro, I don't know how to swim. Oh, don't let that worry you, little doozy. We can learn anybody. Why, heck, Ellie May even learned her cat. Come on, Rusty. Look there. <laughs> Did you have a good swim? See, little doozy? There's nothing to it. Now, you just watch me and do as I do. Come on, little doozy. I'm afraid, Jethro. You got nothing to be afraid of. Why, Ellie Mee is right here. And Rusty, too. I'll do it if Big Jethro commands me to. Big Jethro says, dive in and swim. Look, Jethro, I'm swimming! 
You sure are, little doozy. You just done swum right out of your swimming suit. <laughs> Question 2. How does Granny get the driver to leave the premises? 1. She bakes him a cake. 2. She threatens him with a gun. 3. She asks him nicely. Question 2. How does Granny get the driver to leave the premises? 1. She bakes him a cake. 2. She threatens him with a gun. 3. She asks him nicely. The answer, she threatens him with her double-barreled shotgun. taught us some pretty rough tactics. <laughs> By any chance, were you in the 3rd Battalion? <laughs> Try that, little doozer. It works! Now, I'll tell you what you can do. You will yourself a whole bunch of these, different sizes, tie them together side by each. You can play a real tune. But I don't have a knife, sir. But I'll tell you what. If you promise to handle it real careful, like I showed you, safety first, don't cut yourself. You can have this one. Gee, thank you, Uncle Jed. You know, by rights, I ain't your Uncle Jed. Just Jethro. Oh, yes. I'm sorry, Mr. Clampett. Seeing as how you're such a good friend of Jethro's, you can call me Uncle Jed. Now remember, Third, you gotta keep your eye on the cork. When the cork starts bobbing around in the water, then you know that a fish is nosing around the bait. Again, when the cork all of a sudden ducks under the water, then you know old Mr. Fish has grabbed the bait and you pull him out. Can I hold the line, Mrs. Granny? Sure, you might as well get the feel of it. I caught something! Oh, you couldn't have. There's nothing in there. It felt like a whale! Help me! <laughs> I figured I'd let little Lucy see what it was like to catch a big old catfish. <laughs> you hold it kind of loose this way. You bring your arm back. And just as you let it fly, you give it a little spin. You watch. Perfect ringer, Uncle Jed. Yeah. And yeah, well, you try. <laughs> you see how handy it is to be able to climb a tree? <laughs> Be of good cheer, Wilkins. I am confident that we shall find everything here in possum pot. <laughs> Apple pie order. 
Howdy, Mr. Drysdale. Well, Miss Jean, Mr. Wilkins, come on in. Gonna bake a tater pie to give to little goose. And it'll taste so good his toes will curl up in his shoes. <laughs> to bake a tater pie, it takes a lot of possum fat. I don't think that fella chef can bake it in his hand. Greetings, <laughs> <laughs> Granny. Hello, oh, Granny. Thought I told you to secede from these parts. Ah, <laughs> Granny. Madam, I demand to see Master Armstrong immediately. Shh, don't wake him up. He's taking his nap. Yeah, you see, he's getting his rest. Needs it, too. Poor little fella's all tuckered out. Which bedroom is he in? He's napping right out there in the sun. The sun? <laughs> this kid is far too sensitive to be exposed to ultraviolet rays. <laughs> He's allergic to animals. <laughs> You're coming home and have an antiseptic bath and then spend an hour in your oxygen tent. Wilkins, I'm not going. Then I'll take you by force. You will. Like Grant took Richmond. <laughs> if I was... It's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heaping helping of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, here. Question three. What famous character does Mr. Wilkins also portray in I Dream of Jeannie? One, Samantha Stevens. Two, Jeannie. Three, Colonel Alfred Bellows. Question three. What famous character does Mr. Wilkins also portray in I Dream of Jeannie? One, Samantha Stevens. Two. Jeannie. Three. Colonel Alfred Bellows. The answer, he plays Colonel Alfred Bellows, the nosy NASA psychiatrist always trying to uncover Major Nelson and Jeannie's secret. 